All hey right. Guys. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Sunday Tea Book, episode 34. 34. You were about to say it. I'm really calm about episode 34. <laughs> you know, big deal. 34. Not that many. It's just a couple. All right. So here we are, episode 34. You Truth not as a whole. Like Truth be told, I'm super excited. Holy hamburger caught in a health food store. Here we go. Yes, welcome to the stream. <laughs> Time Signature MMA with possibly the best, uh, I don't know what to call them, comments? The best comments of all time. <laughs> of, of the history of YouTube, even. Um, these are epic. Reiner, welcome back, to the, uh, welcome back to the stream. Welcome back to Sunday Tea Book episode 34. Today we're talking about tea storage and... and Cleanup. Tea wear cleanup. Tea wear cleanup, yeah. Mm -hmm. All of our favorite tasks. Hello there on Instagram. Teas by Dan. Teas by Dan. Danny. Danny. 1800. Welcome to this stream. Love your videos. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Danny. Teas by Danny. We really appreciate that. We are excited to get started today. We have all the regular uh, stuff lined up for you. We're wrapping up part two today. Very exciting. We've got two more episodes. Yes, after today, we've mm -hmm. only got two more for China Tea. Don't worry, Sunday Tea Book will continue to come at you. Don't miss our live coming up. Next this, Thursday? Next Thursday, not this coming Thursday? The coming Thursday. This one coming up. If your week starts on Sunday, yes, this Thursday. Right, so this Thursday, we've got a live stream coming up to talk about our next... Uh, our next, well, what is Sunday Tea Book? For those of you new to Sunday right. Tea Book, this is where Jen and I go over books, articles, or papers um, that are full of great information about Chinese tea and its culture, and we, we translate them uh, live with you. And why do we do that live? Because it is really enriching in terms of understanding why the confusion exists, how to mitigate the confusion, and just add to your toolbox, and you've been adding to our toolbox, how to find the right words for things. Mm. It's just really valuable to do that together. Mm. So that's what Sunday Tea Book is all about. Our first book, Jem will tell you about it in a moment, but it's coming, we're wrapping it up in a couple episodes, so yeah, we're gonna we have a live- Yeah, we have done that uh, in the past six months. Yes, if, months. so six months, we've been going chapter by chapter. We'll show you the book in a moment. I'll show them now, show them now. Yes. So the book uh, we have been working on is called China Tea. It's written by my mom, Jianli Wu. And it's a book full of great information about Chinese tea from the Chinese perspective, mm -hmm, which mm -hmm. is really helpful for us to mm -hmm. really have a second thought. Even though some of you guys are really uh, pretty advanced in the tea journeys, have been drinking tea for a while, learning a lot about tea, but uh, the, uh, this book really provides some new, interesting uh, perspectives and uh, certain things that we both have some uh, misunderstanding or some confusions. It's great that uh, we kind of talk this through and work it out. Yep. And uh, also organize what we already know about tea in a very nice way, touching almost every little aspect of Chinese tea. Yeah, it really is a great book. and. Um... Not only that, the finished translation is available. The link is down below in the description of this video and every other Sunday Tea Book video. There's a link to the finished translation that goes with the section we're doing today. So you can go to our website to get that. It is a great reference. I was going to say that book is not only great for all the reasons Jen said, it's also a great thing to come back to as you gain experience about Chinese tea. It, for me, has been a great reference on just to refresh, remind, and you know, when you learn something, you learn it, you know, the first time, you, then you put that in practice. You come back, you learn something new when you have that practice. Like last week's uh, mm. Sandy Tea, we talk about something that people are oh, so boy. familiar with. So, so familiar. I thought I was. Yeah, but it's a kind of a, a unexpected mm -hmm. uh, information about some Sandy Tea, like the most common jasmine green tea. Yeah. Yeah, really cool <laughs> stuff. So um, a good idea for those of you, where are we at now? Oh yeah, so next, this coming Thursday, <laughs> coming up this Thursday, we're going to be talking about what to do next for mm. Sunday Tea Book because we're going to be looking for that next book, that next article, that next paper to talk about. So uh, join us for that. Get involved. Um, let's hear your two cents about what you think would mm. be a good uh, topic or if you know a specific paper or article or book, anything like that, join us. Yes, and share with us what you're sipping right now while you're watching our live. Oh, yeah, big time. Uh, we're 
I am going to brew up some um, bai mu dan and let me mm. know what's in your cup. Yeah, let us know what's in your cup. Folks on Instagram, I'm going to show the guys on YouTube a video of the tea we're brewing while you can show the Instagram guys the bai mu dan. So mm. we have got, uh, this is coming up guys. This is a shot of our website for the YouTube folks the tea. of the bai mu dan. And of course we show the dry leaf um, and I'm pointing out the buds with the mouse there. Is, uh, so you can see, uh, you know, w w one bud, one or two leaf by Mudan. We always show the liquor color mm -hmm. and the brood leaf. So three really important things you want to see whenever you look at buying tea online. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, down a little bit further, we've got the description. This tea made by our producers in Taimushan, Shitai and Shifu, an exquisite uh, white tea. Uh, you can get it in the 100 gram cake or a 25 gram bag, which is really nice and convenient. And yeah, from Taimu. So I'm super excited to drink this. We had the top grade version a couple, well, a top grade two version of Bai Mudan two weeks ago during one of our lives. I think so we excited. had Bai Hao Yin Jin, actually. Oh yeah, we did have Bai Hao Yin Jin. Wow. Sorry about the noise. Shpating. <laughs> All right, so hello everybody. Wow, Josh is on time. Your alarm worked out. That is great, Josh. And I was just showing how it comes in the cake and um, I got a little video when I was prepping for the session. So I made a little oh, video cool. of me breaking it apart a little bit longer this time. So I'm kind of, I'm kind of done talking about it. I'm just enjoying the video. So for the Instagram folks, we're going to sign out because we're going to bring the book up on the screen, just like the tea was up on the screen. So you will want to jump over to, uh, jump over to the YouTube side where you can check out the whole stream. But for now, we got to say goodbye. And uh, hello, Sensei Gong Fu joined my tea house at Yoshido Tea Company. Yes, cool. All right, jump on over and we'll see you there. And steeped tea is there. Amazing. Hey, I just wanted to say hi to all the people I missed on Instagram. Put on the... the brew cam? Yeah. yeah. See, we got a brew cam and everything. You have it, you got to develop. Mm -hmm. Brew yes, cam sir. first, then. <laughs> Let's give you the big, water. One, the big one. I oh. Don't worry, I'll fix that in the background. All right, so Instagram folks, I just wanted to say hi and bye because we're heading over to YouTube. We'll see you there. See bye you bye. there. Hi and bye. There was just a bunch of them joined up and I didn't get mm -hmm. a chance to say hi bye. Which one for Brooklyn? Oh, I missed it. I thought I put it back. Sorry. We there had you a go. little practice today earlier on. He has been really bent on with the, the scene change. And I have been practicing focusing with this. Now I'm nervous. It's always good once I'm live, it doesn't work. Right, okay. I was going to say, okay. it's better just not to say anything because once you're live, it's just a disaster. And it's not your fault. It's oh, just here how it we is. go, here we go. Look this at that. This camera, see? I can actually push that to a lot closer. Just so you can see how fuzzy yes. those buds are. It's just gorgeous. Wow. Wow, we're right in there. Yes, and you can see how the. Color, the different colors in different parts and uh, this is mm. from 2018 with a couple of years how this tea would mm. uh, like it looks like compared to right compared to when it was the, fresh a yeah years ago. Mm. anyway oh so excited. awesome camera finally awesome. works all right so i'm on the ball with scene changes now everybody who else barong is here so hello there welcome to the stream and uh, Toronto is sunny too. Yes, we got a beautiful day here yes. again. We had a gorgeous day as well yesterday. It's going to warm up soon. I'm really mm. excited. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was cold yesterday, but it's going, it's going up. Beirang says, mm. is there tea trivia today? Yes, there is coming up soon. And um, time signature. This week's tea adventures. One, tried. Oh, we're getting a week sum up from time signature oh, wow. about his teas over the week. Tried bada bada cha. Let me try that again. Bada bada cha. Yeah, I think I got that. Another oh, Japanese oh. dark tea, tried Darjeeling Oolong, tried Bangladesh black tea, and a home pan roasted by Mudan. Wow, wow, what a week. What a great week you had. That sounds epic. And Josh is super excited for today's episode. I've been dying for some tea. Speaking of, I need to help. I need help. Any tea in the world, what should I drink? Oh, Josh loves to do that. So um, <laughs> I love to kind of participate with that. So mm. tell Josh what you think he should drink, anything in the world. I'm going to suggest today that he drink. <clears throat> it's uh, warming up, getting warmer. I'm going to go with a, uh, oh, you know what's been popular on the Discord mm -hmm. is the, uh, that sticky rice puar. Mm. Pull out your sticky rice puar and give that a whirl, That's Josh, a good choice. if you got it. Since um, we just have sticky rice too. I have to say the white tea really make my nose itchy. The fuzz, the right? Fuzz, yeah, the fuzz, yeah. If you, you know, 
take that out and cut it and stuff. It's just Reiner is sipping a 2020 Guafang Jai Da Shu Shampoo Har. Woo! Ooh, nice. And um, Terry. We're both jiggly jiggly in the background. Yes, yeah, just blue we got the we have the <laughs> rolling and rotating chairs, so it's very hard to sit still. But, Reiner goes on to describe his tea as cinnamon rolls, honey, warm towel, and jasmine flowers. Oh, what a beautiful oh, description, wow. Reiner! I'm just so impressed. Yeah, he always has those really good poetic those. and beautiful. The imagery is just fantastic. Yes, and Terry Todd asks, "Is a China tea available in print?" Uh, Last week, I remember somebody. Someone found it. Yeah, purple, purple something, some publication. Last week, somebody oh, found that on yeah on an online bookstore. I don't remember yes. the name, but it was it was pretty obscure. So mm. maybe Google around. Yeah. I wish we had it. Mm. And a lot of people have asked. We don't have it for for sale on our website, but Google around. But like I said earlier, in case you missed it. We do have the finished retranslation available on our website, mm -hmm. which has um, sort of the English is smoothed out, so it's um, it's quite it's quite a bit more valuable, I'd say, in the end. And it also has all the links to the videos if you want to mm -hmm. check those out. Simmerjeet says hello. I say hello back, Simmerjeet. Welcome to the live session. Betty says cute teacups that match her clothes. Yes. Oh, oh I yes. didn't realize that, but <laughs> these I love these teacups. They're super fun. I'm gonna I'm gonna do that and show them how. Can I do that? I, we showed this when we first featured these, but check check out how they're hand engraved. So I'm just shining and a little really light. And it's really thin. In, yeah, really thin. So when I shine a light in, it just it really shows off the engraving. Mm. Okay, I just was dying to do that. So uh, thank you for the comment on the teacups. And they match. I should have wore a purple. I should have wore purple because I'm yeah, using the purple. Yeah, purple is cup. his. Um, and tea by Danny. Hey, teas by Danny. She came over from um, the Instagram side. Welcome to the YouTube side. I'm just starting my journey with Chinese tea. Watching your videos to learn more. Just got my first guy one yesterday. Yay! Oh, cool. That's awesome. Great news. I love to hear about that. Sticky rice puar Ooh. is a fantastic suggestion. I ran out though. Aww. Uh, so maybe just some delicious shu. I have a gushu from a gushu shu that has notes of sticky rice with no additives. Good call, mm. good call. Here we come. Here's the aroma of the... Mm, you smell the uh, how, the fuzz. The how mm. and uh, the age. Even mm. though it's only two years. Yeah. Almost a three. 2021, three. I'm still not used to. Right? After it's two like, months, I still like feel like It's like 2020 didn't happen. Yeah. A little um, bit sad. Almost a uh, three years, it started to have that. Oh, and Time Signature enjoyed the video on the black Fujuan. That oh, tea was cool. so fascinating. I really loved it. I can't wait to see it. It's a really that. interesting tea, huh? Very interesting. And got him interested in Fujuan. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Shameless plug check out our website. We've got a, a variety of great Fujuan, I believe. So, check them out. Mm -hmm. And um, the black is posted, right? What black? The black Fujuan. Oh yeah, it's posted. So it, we don't have it yet, but we've posted it. So you can go there and click a little button and then you'll know when we get it and you'll be the first to know. Mm. So that's a cool idea if you're interested in trying that exact tea. Um, Beirang bought the book from Purple Culture. Thank you, Beirang, yes. for sharing. Yes, so um, it was Terry Todd who had asked. So Beirang has picked it up from Purple, I forgot, Purple Culture. So there you go. There maybe they'll have. Oh, they're sold out now. He bought the last one. Oh, Shucks. Right. Darn it. Okay, cool. So, guess what, guys? I got to do a little bit of housekeeping here first. So bear with me. Um, it's going to be chunky, guys. I got to do something that I usually do before the, the before the show, but I'm going to get the book ready. Otherwise, I'm going to be shocked when that happens. And then we're going to head straight over for trivia. So just. Uh, I don't think I can do that in the background, can I? I don't even know. All right, just hang on, because I don't have the book. All you get is my desktop, which I feel a little... There we go. So that's gonna, what it's going to look like later, but guess what's going to happen right now? As you probably guessed, it is time for our favorite, well, maybe our second favorite, my favorite is when we dig into the book, but maybe it's your favorite. My favorite is sipping the tea. <laughs> ah, good call, good call. No, yesterday uh, we were busy the whole day until the end of the day. I didn't even get a chance to sit in front of my tea table. It really feels like a big part of the 
life is missing, right? right? At the end, we finally in the evening finally have a chance to sit down, and it was so relaxing. This is so good, so sweet, honey. It's very pleasant. Mm, kind of a malty this. honey. We just had a little um, to end our early lunch so that we didn't like starve from tea starvation. <laughs> Ooh, the age is, uh, it even has more of that age mm. aroma. Oh, this is delightful. Do you find it's really working mm. with that dessert? We just had a, a not too sweet dessert, but the sweetness of the tea is really tickling that purple rice sweetness that's still on my palate. I like its creaminess. Oh, wow. It's oh. soy milk mm. creaminess that is, this is really sweet. Mm -hmm. It has that sugary uh, car oh, that is good caramel, not quite. All right, I kind of promised mm. them. Um, I promised them tea time, so let's get over to it and get on with tea. Tea trivia time. <laughs> I even stuck my tongue out. I'm trying so hard. All right, guys, here we go. It is going to be time for tea trivia in a few moments. Oh, yeah. So as always, right, this is all about warming up to our Sunday tea book episode or whatever video we happen to be doing live. It's just a fun little thing. Uh, there's no, uh, no right answer, no wrong answer. Just take a guess if you're not sure. Um, it's just about having fun. I just make up some goofy questions and we warm up to the day. So it's going to start, just enter the letter or the number, I forget, of the what you think is the answer and the magic computer will do the rest. Here we go. What factor most affects a tea's ability to be aged? Is it one, the oxidation level, two, the fermentation level, three, the cultivar, or four, the processing quality? So just enter the number and hit enter. That'll work fine. Take a guess if you're not sure, but most of all, just have fun with this. You're right about the creaminess. Creaminess with that sweet honey. It doesn't feel heavy. It doesn't feel like uh, having milk mm. or cream products. It's lighter and mm. uplifting. So teased by Danny takes a guess at the oxidation level. Reiner comes in. Simmerjeet goes with four, the processing quality. Josh also comes in with a four, so just take a guess, guys. You still have a few minutes when the scene changes to the sort of uh, here's how you did screen. You still have some time to enter your answer, but you are racing against the clock at that point. So a few minutes left, time signature comes in with one oxidation level. Josh says, oh no, wait, oh, this is a hard one. Ha, <laughs> Leogo <laughs> Davidson, hey, welcome, and guesses fermentation level. Beirong Hakimi guesses one. This is great, guys. Good guesses all around, no matter uh, whether you're right or wrong. Betty comes in with a one. And the correct answer is, as Simmerji, Josh, and Fernanda entered, four, processing quality. All right. So, um, right. So oxidation and fermentation level are often thought to be sort of uh, the main thing. But for really for aging, I have to go with processing quality. Because whether it's a oolong or a black tea or a puar, processing quality really matters. All right, here we go. Next question. Do not use soap with this type of teaware. Is it one, porcelain, two, clay, three, glass, or four, metal? Do not use soap with this type of teaware. And Josh cleverly points out that if it was purely oxidation level, we couldn't age white tea. Good one. Or shampooar, for that matter, right? So the guess is rolling in now. Reiner comes in with two, Clay, teased by Danny, Clay, Simmerjeet, Clay, Beron, Clay. Josh says, OMG, Clay, which will not register. The magical computer will not catch your answer, but he comes back with a number two to make sure he gets, gets in under the wire. <laughs> Time signature with an extremely cheeky response of five. <laughs> Good one, I like that. Timo, Timo Buskamp. Hey, welcome. I hope I pronounced that beta correctly. I think it's like a double S. Wow. Um, I don't know, but welcome to the stream and thanks for participating. And we have nearly everybody ringing in number two. Terry, thanks for being brave and going against the green and guessing glass. I think that's perfectly fine. Um, oh, retracted your message. It's okay. <laughs> We're just having fun. Don't worry. 
and uh, everybody uh, that's good guess clay and typically yeasting clay is what we think of but it actually applies to any unglazed clay you don't want to wash those with soap because porous. they're porous and they're going to absorb the aroma and make your tea taste bleh. <laughs> okie dokie next question which is not a good use for a tea, t a tea towel is it one drying teaware two conditioning young yeasting teaware uh, young is the Chinese term for, you know, shining up your uh, yeasting teapots. Three, wiping up minor spills around the tea table. Or four, washing the dishes. Which is not, <laughs> which is not a good use for a tea towel. <laughs> Throw in a couple of fun ones, guys. I gotta, we're really focused on just having fun here. So, Simergy comes out with four. Do not use your tea towel for washing the dishes. I see lots of guesses rolling in for answer four. Josh says he heard a horror story about a lady who inherited the yeasting pot and a buyer who was willing to pay 12,000 because it was a rare old pot and she washed it with soap to prepare it. Whoops a daisy, the sale was oh. canceled. Right, so we're gonna talk about that more today, that very thing when we talk about uh, cleaning mm. your teaware. So uh, Josh says, keep far away from soap. Berong says four. Terry says, I hit the wrong number first. Here we go, which is not a good use for a tea towel? And many of you got it. Wow, two, four, six, eight people got the right answer with washing the dishes. That's right, mm -hmm. we are not going to be washing our regular pots and pans and our supper dishes with our tea towel. We're gonna to use them for those other things that we saw. All righty, great guesses guys and thanks everybody. <laughs> I like it, Josh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, I gotta get on. Next okay, question. Okay. What is the advantage to drinking tea in nature? Is it the fresh air? Is it the singing birds? Is it the beautiful sunshine or is it all of the above? <laughs> Just a I didn't know you have this one. <laughs> they're all ready. Very good they're one. They're all I'm they're ready. all related to today. So yes. um Josh Oh jumping says, squirrel, you didn't put that in. Jumping squirrels, yes. We're thinking about setting up a motion sensing cam outside our window just to record squirrels jumping from tree to tree. It's so dramatic. A lot of answers coming in for all of the above. Uh, Betty guesses the beautiful sunshine. Josh says also, LMAO, does anyone use a towel to wash their dishes? Don't people use like a sponge and then the towels to dry? Fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> I didn't fool anybody, did I? All right, tons of guesses for three, one, a bunch of stuff. Uh, many guesses, seems to be mostly three. Josh with the uh, three span, <laughs> the string of threes. I wanted to take this moment to chat mm -hmm. about, uh, we just, Jen just did her first, she's still here, she's over there. She <laughs> just, we just went out and we went, did some cross country skiing and we brewed some tea out in the fresh air and it was gorgeous. All right, everybody, great answers. Many of you guessed all of the above. All of those things are great about, uh, about brewing tea in the outdoors. But for those of you who guessed only the fresh air, perhaps you don't like sunshine or singing birds and that's okay. Um, Last question. When is the best time to clean your teaware? One, no hurry, do it whenever. Two, as soon as, that's definitely, <laughs> that's, that's awesome. definitely the one I lean towards. <laughs> Two, as soon as the tea is finished. Three, the day after the tea is finished. Or four, don't worry about it. Teaware doesn't need to be cleaned. <laughs> All right, Lolo, welcome. He was delayed, but now they're here. Welcome. Um, they're wrong. We got no sunshine, no birds in Denmark this time of year. Ooh. They're scarce here too this time of year. I think they're... they're even more north than us. Mm. Is that right? Yeah, at least close. At least close. Mm. We have so chickadees. cool. They're wrong from Denmark. We've got Reiner from Germany. We've got some folks from Toronto. All right, guys. When is the best time to clean your teaware? No hurry. Do it whenever. Two, as soon as the tea is finished. Three, the day after the tea is finished. Or four, teaware doesn't even need to be cleaned. I like four. I wish it's four. Right? Of self-cleaning teaware. Okay, that's a million dollar invention if you can come up with it. So lots of people are saying as soon as the tea is finished, I'd be curious to know how many of them practice as soon as the tea is finished. Not to judge because again, I practice uh, number one uh, way too much. And the correct answer, as many of you guessed, is number two. As soon as the tea is finished is the prime time to get all of that tea rinsed off. And way to go, guys. All right, so here come the... Uh, the final results of tea trivia time for episode 34 of Sunday Tea Book. Now, there we go. 
Ooh. Way to go, Josh, with five right answers, along with Fernanda. Simmerji coming in with four, as well as Reiner. Teased by Danny. Great job. Just starting the Sunday, or just starting her tea journey, and up in the top of the leaderboard with so many folks. And Timo, oh yeah, Buskamp also. Anyway, you're all winners in my book. Everybody did a great job. It's all about participating and having fun. So uh, I thank you all, and I hope you enjoyed this round of Tea Trivia Time. Now, let's get down to some business. Okay, okay, okay. It's not such awful business. Um, we'll get a little fill up on the tea. So way to go, everybody. Um, mm. Leogo Davidson says, I clean my nice teapots ASAP. Mm. Always a good practice. Mm. Always a yeah. good practice. It's really hard to stick with a cleaning right away. Right, it's tricky, especially if you didn't feel like you finished the tea. That happens with us a lot. We kind of sit down for a session. It's mm. a little break from work, but we've got, you know, 10, 15 minutes. So we, we brew for that time. The tea is still good. So we just put the lid, then we come back in the evening. And sometimes we realize, oh, it's already spent. We're just too cheap to dump that right away. Right? Yeah, let us know if you have that phenomenon too. Sometimes it's just like we, you just don't want to let go of the tea leaf. You're just right. like, there's got to be something left in it. There's got to be one more infusion, just one more infusion. Mm. Plus, I really like to do long steep. Mm. <laughs> Time Signature says, I live in Denmark. I saw the sun today and a bird. Cool. I didn't know Time Signature was in Denmark. But uh, cool. So uh, you're in a, a nice part of Denmark then. Excellent. Uh, Fernanda says, Tisk Pearl. Uh, tisk to Josh. And um, yeah, fun times. Cindy says, well done, Josh. Fun, Beron. You must not be from, from FYN then. Finn? Finn? Well, cool. Cool. All right, guys. Let's dive in. The last section of part two. Let's jump over to Sunday Tea Book. Oh, look at what time signature I'm in. A said. I'm actually from Finn, but I don't live there anymore. Wow. What an interestingly small world. No. Let me phrase that in the time signature MMA way. <laughs> Holy small world. I'm not, as, yeah. I'm not as good at it as you. I'm curious to see what Somehow time signature. It's awkward what you right? said. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. I don't know. Can I say Holy small Norse world? I don't know. I just, it's too late. I've ruined it. <laughs> Hopefully time signature can recover for me. Here we are though, guys. We're at, um, we're reading over... China tea coming up to the end of part two. So part one, we covered all kinds of cool stuff uh, that kind of generally went over tea, understanding the leaf and its appreciation. Part two talks about, talked about making tea, um, kind of getting into more appraisal sets, water, and then it went into the specific tea types and teas, green tea, black tea, dark tea, oolong tea, yellow tea, scented and blended tea. I'm just going over the table, and now here we are in step three, the end of part two, cleaning the sets, storage, and drinking tea in the open air. So now you know what inspired my trivia questions. <laughs> that smell, that warm, comforting smell is, if there's a perfume like that, capture that smell of right. the tea, it would be so good. I find that has that soy milky smell too, though. Not to right? say, not saying you should just dab soy milk on your neck or anything. <laughs> All right, so um, here we go, guys. Cleaning the sets. Mm. Oh, there's mm. ooh, cool. There's some foreign language going on in the chat. Keep it up, guys. We love that. Try it. I like to hear you pronounce it. Oh, I can. I don't even oh, know. No. I have to think about. I don't want you to okay. take this the wrong way, guys. But sometimes they speak those language in Viking, so I'm just thinking oh, it probably sound right. a little bit like that. <laughs> but I don't. I can't even guess. I don't know how no. to um, how to speak Norse, uh, how to speak Danish. Danish. That should be Danish. I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, here we go. Cleaning the sets. Oh, that's so exciting, though. I, hey, guys, if you're from somewhere cool, let us know. I know many of you guys. We kind of know where you're from because you're. What do we call it? You're part of the tea tribe, okay? So we love that, but uh, let everybody know where you're from. It's kind of cool to see people from all over the world joining together to sit around the tea table, sip tea, and have fun. 
It's really mesmerizing to see that. Yeah, wow. All right. I wonder if he can do his, his little sayings in Danish. Whew. Cleaning the sets. <laughs> it is important to clean the sets in time. After drinking, you must not be lazy. It is very important to clean the sets in time. Do not think it is bother to clean the sets. If the brewed tea, hold it up. If the brewed tea left for a long time, it will pollute the tea sets. Or if the sets are not fully cleaned, the inside part will come out a lot of tea scale. The harmful substance in it will integrate into the soup the next time. Thus will be harmful for our health. Being a frequent tea drinker, it is necessary to clean the scale inside in time. The best cleaning method. I'll do these two, two sections and then we'll come back. To wash the sand fired pot, take out the brewed leaves and wash by water. Never use cleaning products. Otherwise, once a nice pot absorbs chemical taste, then it will, not, it will be not worth keeping which also affects the quality of brewing tea later. Porcelain or pottery sets can be washed by cleaning products. Be aware of cleaning the handle, bottom, and inside. You can use your hands or a cotton swab or other fur tool to clean, <laughs> like, like your cat, instead of steel, <laughs> so as not to scratch cup with glaze. If there is too much tea scale, with the toothpaste instead of detergent, cleaning. Use dry tea towel to clean the stain on the washed tea set. The tea towel should be washed and dried up in time to be used later. The best way to wash is dropping the tea leaves away after drinking and cleaning the sets with pure water. If you can keep this good habit, then tea sets will keep its brightness without any cleaning products. Awesome. Let's go back up to the top and let's just uh, go over this. Let's, Honestly, this was pretty straight. I think it's, it's pretty common sense. Although the translation, I kind of threw in my two cents about cleaning the tea sets with fur. Don't use your cat or dog to clean your tea sets. <laughs> um, a little mistranslation there, but pretty understandable, really. Um, clean up um, or your tea sets will get a little bit filmy. I'm, I, hope some of, I hope none of you know about that, but probably many of you tea drinkers already know that if you don't clean them right away, they do get a little film. And then that film can be a little bit hard to scrub off, but there's some tips here. It is pretty straight up. Mm. I didn't see much um, that was hard to understand in either of these sections, except I guess the only thing I thought was worth emphasizing was just don't use soap on your clay tea sets, which was quite well articulated here. They say it would not be worth keeping. Um, it just taints the flavor, right? Yeah, I was gonna just point out that like, uh almost like everything we say on the channel don't do or stuff it's just a suggestion right mm, how right. you actually use your teaware how you use anything you can use you can drink directly from serving pot if you want you can use a teacup to brew there's no rules okay i do that yeah <laughs> me too i sometimes get in a we'll bit of trouble for that <laughs> yeah but what i mean is like uh, uh, it doesn't worth uh, the the teapot doesn't worth use and it is from the Chinese perspective in terms of mm. uh, we young we condition we and for mm. us the teapot has resale value way is a properly used and maintained mm. that's why we say oh it's a chip or it's a stand or this uh, there's no value it's a resale right. value but can I still use it is this teapot gonna harm my health it's not like that right so similar situation with a uh, cleaning product right. we don't suggest you because it affects the taste mm -hmm. and stuff but if you used it uh, and rinse that well and use it like i mean it's we're our own boss in terms of tea yeah yeah and also there's a really good video uh if you are into uh into yeasting teapot or you have a new one or you got an old one and you want to uh take good care of it you did that video actually, I think, uh, how, to, how to take care of, how to choose and take care of a yeasting teapot. Mm. So I'll add that link down below. I gotta take notes right. or I'll forget, so I'm gonna just put that, but I'll put a link to that video down below. Yeah, and we're coming up soon with uh, episode two about the yeasting teapot. I know the, the first one was more of a how to choose and some basic ones, and this one I wanna cover a little bit more about uh, you know how to take care of it, how to condition it, and the little things and uh, certain aspects of a teapot that wasn't mentioned in series one, like people wondering about 
what clay for what tea and stuff. Mm. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask here. Yeah, shoot them up here in the chat or put them in Instagram, the comments down below anywhere, yeah. so we can add them into that video. That's going to be, I love when you do those follow up videos. We did the same thing when you, when we, we did it, but uh, she's the genius behind the whole thing. We did the same thing with tea categories. We have kind of a mm. tea categories 101, a tea categories two, 201, or maybe it's 2.0. I don't know, but we use, you know, basically you have sort of the intro level and then the sort of level up. So mm. stay tuned for that. That's exciting. All right, so um, right, so the next section too. So I think that that covered my. I didn't have many questions. Uh, there's a bit about um, using a tea towel to kind of condition your pot or to give your stuff a little dry so they don't get spotty. Yeah, it's all good. Yeah. Let's check the comments. I see lots of comments and lots of multilingual comments, which is awesome. So what Whoa. is? Let's just scroll up. So fancy. Oh boy. I guess they're tired of us reading the comments. So now they, we've gone from, um, I don't know if it's, I think it's Danish. I don't know. Danish is easy. Pretend you're drunk and that your tongue is paralyzed. Oh, perfect. I'm going to try it then. Um, let me try. I don't know. I, I used your advice. Okay. A paralyzed it tongue and drunk. Like ger- I don't know. Then Reiner says, uh, says something, and I am from Germany. Ich komme aus Deutschland. Oh, I'm from Germany, I guess. Oh. Teased by Danny. I'm from Brazil, but resident of USA for years. Awesome. This is great. I love hearing where everybody's from. Yeah. Um, hey, Danny, I am Brazilian. Fernanda. Oi. Oi, yeah, that's we the know only that one. <laughs> that's the only one I recommend. Oh, that's great. I love it. Oh, Everybody's cool. chatting. Everybody's chatting. I'm going to skip over it because I, I don't want to just make a fool of myself and try and uh, like I just did there in Danish. <laughs> um, really tempting to... I oh, I think Time Signature speaks... I, I oh, look at this. I think he's also typing. He's a linguist, right? Did uh, he mention he was a linguist? Did you mention you were... Oh, Holy, holy man of many tongues, Batman. <laughs> I find using rubbing alcohol cleans any tea residue instantaneously, but only for glazed ceramic glassware, of course, not clay. Mm. Mm, yes. Yeah, that's not a bad tip. We're big fans of alcohol too. Mm. Rubbing alcohol for cleaning purposes is what I mean. <laughs> All right. Nobody think of other things. Right? Only you. Lolo says, ah, okay, I thought cleaning with the pottery, of course, throw away used leaves immediately. Never seen so much black mold once I forgot to remove them. Ooh, yeah, that can be a bit scary if you leave the lid on or whatever and I come back. Found, I found in general teapot, like a Yixing clay teapot mm. doesn't generate much mold. Right. I left that a week or two and it was good. And then like by, by good, it's not like the tea didn't go bad. The tea was like a, smells a little bit off, but there's no nothing like the leaf itself yeah, it looks normal right yeah. yeah and also depends on the tea like the other mm. couple of weeks ago we had that top gray by how engine and we just left that in the studio but the next we week we <laughs> when we're supposed to get ready for all this time so a week later i discovered that that was brewed in a guy one and yeah. it looks totally fine yeah the leaf still had it like really like uh, lively it doesn't look like it got a, a week i thought I, w- I suggested that we brew it and she's like dude that was a week ago and i'm like oh yeah you're right but i look at the leaf and i just reacted to and that and we brew that we tried and i forced him to try it because uh, uh when i first uh, brew if i it, drop dead <laughs> i want to mention this this is actually very interesting and mm. we talk about this in the morning too about how we uh, a lot of times we're losing a lot of uh, like uh, different senses and mm. edges. So one of the thing is in terms of taste, right? Mm. That tea I brewed it I, right uh, right away in boiling water and tasted it. It wasn't very bad, but it's the, really the weak thin, old tea. The weak old tea, mm. and it was really light because we already brewed many times on yeah. camera, yeah. and uh, so I was like let it long. I microwaved again after the liquor was cold, so just to warm it up mm-hmm. and drink it. And it has a minor, it's not moldy flavor. No. Nope. It's not full moldy, but it's off because little, we know how they're supposed to taste yeah, like. Almost like a, like almost like sun touch, but not you quite. You call that peppery. 
Oh, yes, it was. You call that like yeah. a pepper, but it's mm. off. It's off. Yeah, the, what I was trying to say is because we have fridge and we have a lot of uh, new ways and preserve food, and we don't like uh, waste as much food for days and stuff. We don't have much taste things when they right. go bad, and the things are not like uh, today is uh, fresh, tomorrow is bad. There's right. a, a, a a spectrum Dingo. of how. It Changes yes. right mm. throughout yeah. the process. Yeah. It might not taste like moldiness yeah. Like uh, he described that as peppery. I didn't feel like it was peppery just off something off I cannot mm. say it clearly But uh, I just found that's an interesting tasting nose especially for people who are in HT, right? What mm. is this tea right. going mold? Is this bad? Right. right. And or is this uh, aged flavor? Some people take the moldy tea as aged flavor, right? Yeah. And again, when tomato goes bad moldy, it doesn't taste the same as how tea goes mm. bad moldy. I like right. those, those things because of uh, our living standard, right? So we kind of... Uh, we uh, don't come in touch with yeah. them very often. It's, we're it's, losing that. Yeah, and, and we're uh, like... I think also, I don't... Let me see if I can say this without... I don't want to offend anybody, but the our, there's a certain wealthiness now that people throw stuff out the moment they think it's bad. You know, old times mm. you had to try it and, oh, it's not good enough. I'm just going to put some extra seasoning, you know, mm. and, and there's this phobia of those things that are a little bit bad and they're probably not so bad nowadays, but it does give you a little more idea. Just in terms of a taste, old times we use a smell, we use taste right. to protect ourselves yeah. from those right. going bad and right. now we don't need it. Not a date on Which, a package. Yes, right? yes. Yeah. 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 Anyway, just the little things. Yeah. Fun, <laughs> fun, at the t fun, fun with tea at our household. <laughs> taste it. Huh? It's a week old. Taste it anyway. I tasted it. it was just a mini sip. I just didn't ask sip. him to no, finish really the whole thing. It just is good too to get the uh, Get your you know, guts a little exercise. <laughs> I was just thinking to get the flavor. Oh, but yeah. okay. <laughs> to get the knowledge of the flavor. What, is, what it tastes like as it goes. And I think that is... It's a really important part of tea tasting, right? Is getting a good baseline. What is a good one? Right. And then you can know how to uh, find your way around. All right, so a couple more comments and we'll head back into the book. I thought cleaning, right? Um, holy foreshadowing trivia question. There's the tea towel, yes. And Lolo says, um, I thought cleaning the pottery. Never tried that. Baking soda on porcelain. Did some, oh, I didn't miss the baking soda comment. Baking soda, I've never used baking soda on porcelain. I don't know if it would work. I don't know. Let us know if that works for you. Should sure work. How do you guys know you're getting a real clay never... instead of a fake? I got one from Amazon, but doesn't look legit. Mm. <laughs> That's a great question. I don't know if it's if there's an easy answer to that. Mm. Do you mind me asking why it's not legit to you? What what makes you feel like it's right? I'm just wondering, like because in terms of a real and fake, I feel like. The easiest is not always true is the price. Right. Because it's really hard to say that you see something and it means it's real or you say something like lusters or texture. There are so many styles out there. But in, yeah. Ah, Fernanda says best to respond is Jen, but price are a good indicator. <laughs> right? Uh, yeah. Similar. Yes. Similar. It is a, yeah. It's a, because it's a really a it's big kind of, complicated question. Yeah. Yeah. At Teas by Danny, my first one was also fake. Now I have a real easing. Barong mm. baking soda plus citric acid is very good for cleaning porcelain. Mm. Mm -hmm. That should get it. Time signature. Oh, can't say that. My tongue, my tongue isn't numb. <laughs> Betty's also from Denmark. And agrees that that is what it's like when they speak. Like a <laughs> drunk with a numb tongue. Was it numb? Something like that. Okay, I have a question. So... Dude, that sounded very Danish. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what about Vikings? Do you guys watch that? Are they, when they speak, are they Danish kind of? Right. Do they sound? Uh, so we watched that series. I think it's on Netflix now, but it started right. on the History Channel, and it's a series about uh, Vikings. So they sometimes slip into different languages. I think they're from yeah, when Norway they or something. But then whenever they feature the Swedish dude, he speaks his language, which is yeah, different. So suddenly you... they speak with their tongue or whatever. 
All right, so Josh said the shoe was a fantastic suggestion. Really enjoying the age taste, 2007 tool. Mm. Who's from Canada, eh? Yeah, yeah, that's right. I should wear a toque in the next episode. <laughs> mm. Okay, okay. You mm. just want to get a toque. And Josh is a big fan of alcohol. Um, great choice with the shoe. It's my go-to evening tea. Mm. Reiner and us share that in common. Every night, pretty much, we crack open a crack open some kind of shoe pour. Yesterday, we went back to the 2015 mm -hmm. cake. Super, super nice how that's aging. Thanks, I love shoe, but I was on such a white tea kick. I haven't had it in months. Hey, we're on a white tea kick too. Mm -hmm. Never tried alcohol. So Fernanda says she never tried alcohol to clean the porcelain. We use alcohol for cleaning lots of stuff. For me, it's, uh, then Josh says, mm, all the things that we all love about uh, shoe. Yeah. One of my faves, but I've had one or two friends say it's quote unquote, it's moldy when it wasn't. For me, it's one of the most evocative flavors, like traveling mm. to rural mountains in China just with your palate. I absolutely love this so much. So that he's talking about that earthy, wet earth, probably leathery yeah. flavors yeah. that you get at the farmyard cavey. Yeah, I like that. Cavey is a good one. Mm -hmm. Anyone tried pickling and eating tea leaves? Apparently they do that in Myanmar. Mm. Oh, kind of pickled veggie. Mm. Mm, I don't know about pickling, but we do eat tea leaves. <laughs> And Fernanda says, guys, I'm logging, I'm logging off sometime. Pleasure to see all hugs. Okay, see you okay, later, Fernanda. You. Hopefully bye we didn't bye. miss you. Beirong, so, Beirong says, sorry, ironically, I've never seen that show. Oh, the Viking oh, show. Oh, right. And Josh is watching two Scandinavian shows, Scam Norway and Rita, Denmark. Oh, Scam from Norway and Rita from Denmark. And oh. I've been loving them. I've been to both places. And Copenhagen is one of my favorite places on earth. Cindy's drinking by Mudan with us. Oh, Cindy, cool. you're the best. You're always kind of uh, matched up with us and we really appreciate it. Yeah. I haven't seen Vikings, but there's a guy that speaks Danish in The 13th Warrior. Teased by Danny. Ah. Hugs. All right, guys. So lots of stuff going on here. Language, cleaning, everything. It's very cool. White tea. Mm, this is so good. That sweetness lingers forever. I have a sweetness in the back of my mouth that just, the first sip remind, brought back that whole dessert we had. We had this amazing dessert <laughs> and it's still there and it's still in the back of my mouth right now. A I little gentle a honey idea. sweet with that creamy texture. Yeah. Mm. All right, back to the book. Sorry. Oh, it's okay. I She's so noisy. Something. I thought it was a good idea to be closer. Somehow it makes that too close. I cannot tuck my pillow. Go back all the way. All right, well, we do renovations over there. Let's dive <laughs> back into the book. This section is about storage of tea. For a tea lover, it is necessary to know how to store tea. Without a suitable storage, the high quality tea will be deteriorated. In order to avoid this, tea must be stored carefully. If you follow the methods below, the storage date will be longer. One, put the tea into the tea canister quickly, but to remove the odor of the canister first. The method is to put a little tea into the canister and shake it or baked by fire. It is better to put tea with the packaged paper together in the canister. Two, it is particular about the selection of tea canister. Never use iron or porcelain canister that for storing other things. Avoid glass jar, which is easily be irradiated with rays or it will affect the tea quality. It is better for iron tea canisters with inside and outside lids a good seal. It is best to use the tin can. If you buy a lot of tea one time, it is, oh sorry, three. If you buy a lot of tea one time, it is better to put a small amount for daily use into the small canister and the left should be stored in other canisters. If for long time storage, use the adhesive tape to seal the mouth and bake once a year. Four, never use your hand to fetch tea from the canister. In case that the odor of hands or others absorbed by tea, use teaspoon instead, or use the common iron spoon, but it cannot be used for nothing else. Five, do not put the tea canister in the kitchen or other human places. 
nor together with clothes, preferably in the dark and dry places. If cautiously store tea, even for a few years, it would not be bad. A special flavor by aged tea can also be added tea interest. All right, guys. Just uh, before we start, I, I think I didn't answer uh, Tea by Danny's uh, question well with the teapots. I just thought, because I just uh, said the price, but I think it's a, a, a little bit vague. I want to finish that. Oh, sure. Is yeah. That okay? That's okay. It's because I talk about price, but people don't really understand the price range of a teapot as, uh, so ah, well. I don't want point. you to feel like you have to spend hundreds or thousands of dollars so you can get a real one that's not it i'm just saying like if you're finding 20 dollar 10 dollar mm. 20 dollar or 30 dollar teapot uh they're not likely to be the real ones because of the cost in china a certain there's a certain threshold right mm -hmm. um you know uh, 50 dollars uh, and up and 100 dollars like at least 50 dollars Mm -hmm. And uh, at the same time, you also don't want to, if somebody is selling you a teapot of a $300, $500 teapot and uh, their emphasis is uh, this is a real teapot, and it's also a, a little giveaway and that's not a reliable source because the uh, Yixin Zizha teapot is also not that uh, rare right. to say Good you point. have to spend that much money right. to get a real one. Yes. The real add-on uh, uh, excessive uh, ex accessory value, like what really makes a teapot expensive is artists to work on it, mm. which requires a certain level of, you know, uh, knowing something to identify is this teapot really well made? Right. Is that really constructed with real artist right. uh, value? But those are things that push a teapot to hundred to thousand dollars, mm. not the material. But I do notice there are people who say, oh, this is a teapot for a very expensive uh, seven, eight hundred because it's a real one. That's wrong. That, mm. that tells me there's something fishy here. Right. Okay, just want to clear that a little bit because what I said was too bad. No, that's helpful. fine. You had asked a question, that's why. Right. So we were just have a little pause and now come okay. back to it. And it reminded me, we also have, a, was it a live we did on Yixing or? A, yeah, know. we did a, a, mm. a There's some really something. good information in that um, that you covered as well. I, I was just thinking about that. So I'll also put, I'll, I already said that I would put the, the sort of the, the proper video. Um, the one about you know uh, your first pick, but I'll also put the live, the Yixing live, because that has some really great information that Jen shared with everybody. Mm. I'll put that link down below. Uh, sometime after the uh, live, this live is done, I just I, I say that every episode, and so I want to say one other thing about that. Sometimes you'll notice after we're done the live, the live will disappear. Don't panic; it's coming back. And the links that I promised will usually be there. And if they're not, throw down a comment and say, hey, where's the link? And I'll put it there. <laughs> Try to type it with that exact tone of voice as well. Um, anyway, uh, so just if you, if you don't, don't, don't become distraught if you see that the live is gone. It's coming back, okay? We're gonna, and all the links will be there and everything will be fine. Okay, okay everything's good. All right, so okay. let's get back over yes. with the sound effects. Nice. All right. So tea storage. Oops, wrong area. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Great. Again, not too bad of a section. I switch, switch my book to take a note, so I'm going to switch back. Not too bad of a section, but there's a few spots here. Um, section one here. Whoops. Put new tea into the canister. So there's a little bit. It, the, again, if you're following along with the finished translation, which is linked down below, which I highly recommend, um, you'll catch some of these clarifications, but uh, you know, remove the odor of another canister if you're going to use it. There's two methods given. One, you shake it with some tea. Pretty simple. The other one is baked by fire. That sounds a little bit extreme, right? You do not throw this in your fireplace. Do not put it with the logs. It just means give it a light roast. Yes, right? I, will. I thought that would because uh, um, the translation kind of 
put things together. So what it says, if you have a regular like a tea container before you put your tea in, just in case there's any smell that we didn't sense yeah. with our nose, you put a little bit of the tea you were about to put in, or not, uh, at least relatively tea to absorb the aroma and uh, shake it out. But if you have a metal one, another way, if it's a metal tea, another way right. is to give it on the fire a little light roast, which it means the heat, <clears throat> Sorry, the heat kind of gets any odor right. escape. That's it. And you don't have to put a whole thing over something, a little lighter just to warm it up if you want. Right, like the Again, oven on low kind of thing, right? Like 120 or something? I wouldn't put that in oven because sometimes oh. we do pizza and stuff. You have How cheese would you do in that? it. Oh, just a light, uh, lighter, give it underneath so that it'll oh. warm up. Oh. Or if you have a f uh, like a stove, fire stove, gas stove, okay. like a low, just a low, really just low, a low, really low. low really low ah, heat up got you got you wow yeah, I, candle 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 yeah, yeah i didn't guess that okay that's good so anyway that was i found that a little confusing so that's all cleared mm -hmm. up um and we had just talked about this the day before too i mm -hmm. was putting we had some new tea and i was like oh this is you know we had cut open some kind of a non-permanent bag and and i was going to put it in a canister and you said hey keep that in a in the or in some sort of a better <laughs> sealed package because yeah. um, this one just says better to put tea in the package paper so it means sort of the original if you it doesn't if, necessarily paper right. it, it can be any of the tin, tin foil like the, the there's a bag the right. original package if you can basically you mm. want to seal that as well as possible yeah because typically they'll come in a little, a little sealed bag to start with so you can keep that and then tuck that whole thing in your canister is kind of what that section right there means mm. then in section two i love this avoid glass jars mm -hmm. which are easily irradiated with rays it sounds like like somebody's gonna laser like <laughs> shoot your teeth so the so, i don't know it's just cute right but it, I think what they're saying here is we've been around, you know, having been around tea for a while, like you don't want, su sunlight has an incredible destructive effect and on tea. It's really fast and it's really immediate. If you, uh, I don't recommend you, I don't know, I kind of do recommend you try it, but tr you know, if it happens by accident, t look at that as an opportunity. Or if you have a tea that you, uh, that is not super expensive or something, but just try it. I think it's a really, it's happened for us, mm. for me. It's just a three, five minutes under direct sun, even indoors, you can taste even the difference. Even through your window of your house. If you yes. put that in the uh, direct sun, literally three to five minutes, and you'll taste that sun touch flavor. And it's not pleasant whatsoever. It's not pleasant. It's really nasty. Mm. And uh, so glass, therefore, is not very suitable, um, even though, I have one right here. <laughs> I'll show you later. I want to do a little show and tell after this section. Actually, maybe now I'm going to switch over because um, it also talks here about it's better for iron tea canister with inside outside lid good seal. So this is a little bit confusing too. It says iron. It just means metal tin. Yeah, metal okay. tin. So let me go to uh, let me go to the brew cam because that'll give me a chance to do this little show and tell that I've been kind of planning. So we. Not supposed to use glass, but of course, I have a glass container, but we keep it in a drawer all the time. We're really conscious not to leave that out. So again, like you said earlier, right? All of these are recommended. Your stuff, do what you want, obviously. And if you have a little pouch for a glass jar, you can put a pouch and now you can use it. Right, your it's gold. The reason, mm. it's most important to know why not to use that so you can avoid kind of avoid, yes. yeah. yeah. And so for, for iron, this is actually, I think, tin, a mistranslation of tin, because in the other one it no, says... No, this is the metal. Oh, metal, just in general metal. So it says to have... A, then after that, it says it's best to use the tin can. Right. But the, it says better to have a canist, tea canister with inside and outside. So that's a, I thought that was a bit confusing, but then I remembered we have this guy who has a lid. Oh, a little bit blurry. There we go. Who has this lid. I'm super nervous. Oh, yeah, and then it has it. another inner lid, which is so tightly sealed that this little knob will pop right off if I pull on it. But this gives it a really good seal. Mm -hmm. And then we've got tea. Da -da -da -da. So that's what they mean by that. Uh, yeah. in, you just inside. want to have something that seals really well. And then it is best to use tin cans. So in the finished translation, 
I, I was confused here because it's talking about iron. Um, and then in the previous section, it was talking about um, metal, I believe, a metal canister. And then here they talk about iron and tin. So I thought the material really mattered. So I was really confused. So we, maybe you can talk about that because none of these are actual tin and none of them actually. So you just want to point mm. out that like most of what we see. Isn't you, that a cute little baby? <laughs> right? If you find those things in the market or you see them, almost all of them are some kind of alloy, mm. like metal stuff. It's not tin. Tin means those tin can containers like, but this one it's is also simulating that the tin on the book it means the 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 element tin right mm. sn mm. is that sn yeah, yeah really. <laughs> tell well me done. if it's well wrong uh, so the, the material holy chemist <laughs> uh, the material is not talking about the shape or stuff so that right. material is really good it doesn't react much with air it's easy uh, and it's less lots of metal tins you notice uh, that has this uh, what I'm trying to see. The seam, you're looking the for seam, the seam, you know, so those could be possible leaking, like the, the they're not, they're not they're airtight. Airtight, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. that's why a double lid might be better, or you put the con uh, the package of the leaf, you know, inside, mm -hmm. so it's a mm -hmm. double layered, so it's more sealed. All the concept here is just to say, uh, you want the tea to be well sealed, and with different material, how can you make that happen? Right, right. So there was our little show and tell. And then in part three, it was pretty good. Again, I think people can kind of, um, can kind of jive with this. Basically, if you buy a ton of tea, you put your daily use in a smaller container and keep, mm -hmm. the, keep the long use stuff separate. I think that was pretty straight up. But one thing I like was this little tip here. If it's for long storage, mm -hmm. and again, it's a little chunky, but you can also give it a little extra seal yeah. and just tape it up a bit so that it's really, really nice and airtight since you've got such a large amount. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I think Josh had a question in this section. Never use your hand. It said use an, a common iron spoon. So again, the translation here, I think it's just any metal spoon. Just any so, spoon, yeah, uh, like a commonly... From your kitchen, right? Yes. Like a teaspoon yes. or a tablespoon. Just don't use this, they use that for right. hot sauce or right. something, yes. then use for tea. Swipe one out of, your, out of your cupboard, put it away at your tea table and use it just for tea. Yes. Yeah, uh, or you might have one like this. You know, we have our little tea scoop made of bamboo. It's just for that, mm -hmm. kind of cute. And then the last area. Oh, yeah. Oh, pretty good. Okay. Yeah. Then the number three, the last one talking about. Uh, oh, the rebate. Bake. Mm. Bake once a year. Uh, I don't want to elaborate on this too much, just to know uh, this is a, a rough idea. Not say everybody has to do it, not say every uh, tea needs this. Mm. Uh, this bake is not like in terms of baking in tea, uh, tons of confusion, tons of right. misunderstandings. Not least of which is it's our use of the word bake, bake. is often or stuff. really it's hot. Very, yeah, it's very miss the, the, the English word itself because of how we use that in the life now is using tea is very misleading. Really, yeah. Plus in terms of just to say the process itself, it's not a well understood in the West at all. Right. So uh, there are tons of misunderstanding about that. So you um, do that with great caution, okay? Or don't yes, do it. Ideally, <laughs> you don't do it. Really, yes. I don't suggest a customer. You do that for fun and stuff. It's totally fine. Just right. You can do anything, right? But just to say, in terms of quality, if you think doing that is for quality and stuff, ninety percent, ninety nine percent of people, even tea stores, are re roasting wrong you mm. can taste that uh, anyway it's a big topic and it's so complicated mm. uh, lots of people are asking for this kind of a related explanation i'm just uh, going through my head of how to deliver that clearly no i think that's so, really good um, and i think it, again shameless plug but um our back to that question in tea trivia is uh, a prop a well processed good quality tea is what is the main thing for aging that's most suitable thing for aging i'll talk about our ajiao oolong just briefly
Mm. You can check that out on the website. It's a 2002, um, did I get that right? Yes. 2002 Ai Jiao Oolong that has not been re-roasted and doesn't need to be re-roasted. It was extremely well made at the point of, uh, at the time it was made and is just a wonderful aged tea. So um, yeah, you can get any of our teas and you won't need to re-roast them once a year because we're bringing you the great quality stuff. Mm. And just want to add, it's not just the roasting that is very confusing and the right. people are uh, lots of misunderstanding on that. Same with the fermentation and oxidation. Mm. Oxidation is also a very uh, less known thing, though people think they understand what's mm. going on. Right. Just want to point out because you were talking about that tea. Why that tea doesn't need to really roast? Ah, mm. Just because of the proper oxidation so right. we only talk about uh, <laughs> that's a really good point. you know 40 percent so this is 70 percent it's even more it's even more complicated when you introduce the how they're those two things are actually not independent whatsoever right mm. but anyway it's a big topic it's a huge topic <laughs> and, and at a certain point it's a bit it's a bit too much for consumer yeah. i think yeah. i don't think most people need to know that at all all right so um where were we right Step five. Oh yes, so this one was also pretty good. Basically, mm -hmm. store your tea. Once you've got a great container that's gonna be suitable for storing your tea, either a kit with the bag inside of another container or something that's really well sealed, you gotta keep that in the right environment because eventually the environment's gonna to matter too. Mm -hmm. And it's not super high tech or difficult to achieve the right environment. Just avoid high aroma places like mm -hmm. your kitchen or your closet where you keep your clothes and keep it in a dark, dry place. Mm. Really easy. Okay. Yeah. Like, um, not, it's not high tech to store tea. It's, it's really simple, actually. Yeah. And we have a video on how to store tea, so. And I think we kind of teased on this. So this spe special flavor from aging tea is what this means. This is a mm. little bit of a chunky wording, but we, we, you know, you've probably heard about the concept or you may have heard about it with Shempuar and Shupuar because those are sort of the really popular aging teas, but really any any good quality Chinese tea with the exception of green and yellow tea could be aged, right? Ai Jiao Oolong, for example, I just mentioned that nearly 20 year old Oolong tea, um, dark tea, um, you know, like our, we've got a really nice aged premium Tian Jian, super beautiful, the transformation they make. And each tea type does a little bit of a different transformation as it mm -hmm. ages. So it's something mm -hmm. really fun to experiment Absolutely. with. Absolutely. Mm. All right, so I'm gonna just scroll right into it. Let's head out, no, let's have, we've got tons of comments. I don't wanna to get too behind in the comments. It gets a little bit The last crazy. session is really brief though. It is very brief, so okay. we'll, uh, okay, we'll hit it. We'll hit the last section and then we'll come back for comments and then we'll close up. Okay, guys? And I get to do the transition again. Nice. All right. Drink tea in the open air. We totally promote this. We just, <laughs> are we going to make a video of our ski trip? Yeah. Okay. Stay tuned for that. We, we drank tea in the open air and you'll be able to see that on our channel soon. So fun. I can't, we, what do we say? We say Gong Fu anywhere. Hashtag Gong Fu anywhere. Cause you have to put a hashtag in front of everything now. That's cool. <laughs> So Gong Fu anywhere, guys. Get out there, brew tea with your Gong Fu set, your travel set. Here's some inspiration for you. Drink tea in the open air. Give your mood a holiday. A quiet cup of tea, a quiet cloud and a peaceful heart. It seems that being integrated into the nature and getting together. At this moment, the cloud, tea and heart are intoxicated. Far away from the noise, just within a cup of mist. Let the fragrance of tea nourish our hearts. The green good mood is as precious as freedom. Memory the taste, make our lips tilt upwards. The happiness runs to the brow. All right, a little tea poem for you guys. <laughs> I all right, but I didn't, you get the gist. I didn't take any notes about this because it's not, it's, it's more of an inspirational piece. And uh, hopefully... <laughs> it's just translation is cute. You the translation is super it's cute. It's interesting how different language have the habit of talking different. Right, right. And, um, 
and I think you got the mood out of it of it right it's just like when we go out and you know it's it could be snowy out it can mm -hmm. be uh it could be a really hot day we'll bring our tea everywhere and just pop it out we have you know grab a thermos or even just pack the tea in a thermos a travel mm. mug it's really nice to have that uh, outdoor experience with the tea yeah okay all right let us I think see. we need to go up yeah I think you're right okay where are we looking I think we're Need to go on. My first fake teapot is still one of my favorites. So fake is a relative term. Oh, I totally agree with that. I'm just kind of random reading. I haven't met that guy from 1320 or he's Oh my god, somebody uh -huh. some these people are meeting famous people. Okay, there we go. Josh watching his Scandinavian shows. Right, right. And um mm -hmm. Cindy drinking by Mudan. Yeah. Um hugs, there we go. So Bayrong says, I have met that guy from 13th Warrior. He is that old wrestling guy that copies Hulk Hogan. Ultra cool. Do you know Hulk Hogan? No. Okay. I'll tell her later, okay? I don't want to get off topic here. I'll show you some little videos of Hulk and everything. He's amazing. Cindy says, I fermented tea leaves for Burmese tea leaf salad. Delicious. Whoa, cool. Fermented? Did you just pile them? I'm curious how you did that. Yeah. Do you have the recipe? I would love to see that. Oh, I'm he gonna. Leaves out here we go. I'll Burmese. go over to this channel and I'll promote the Discord for anybody who's new. Link down below. You can join our Discord channel where I'm going to ask Cindy if you would kindly <laughs> share that recipe if you have it, um, or if you can. I don't know. Maybe you're, if you're like Jen, you just kind of this and that and kind of very eyeball. Uh, and that's fine. We can hand just shoot us your loose instructions. We're okay with that. She's okay with that. I'm not I'm not gonna do it um, <laughs> But I'm gonna eat it and um, So yeah, I'd love to hear about that Cindy. That's uh, Yeah, Cindy, that's it. La Pet, right? The Burmese one. I'm not sure where they're talking. Let's keep going. Josh says, ha ha, I wish I could keep up with your guys' tea choices like Sydney, but my stock of certain things are running low after such a long time in lockdown. Oh, I should mm. make a little animation. <laughs> Padlock, lockdown. Yeah. yeah, it's been an interesting time for sure. Lolo says, at Teas by Danny, my first fake teapot is still one of my favorites. So fake is a relative term. I think you covered that pretty well. It yeah. really is. I think the important thing is not a... I think what fake is not a bad. Fake doesn't mean bad. Fake mm. to me is what it is vis-a-vis -vis what you were told is different. Right. Right. So it's not saying you can only use uh, Yixing teapot. There's tons of other teapot you can yeah. use. Yeah. And Chaoshan, uh, the red uh, clay, that's uh, cheaper, accessible too. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's the Yunnan one too. So you can choose. There are lots of choices. Yeah. But uh, I I just feel like I if I'm buying something, I like something, I buying what I was told. Right. I don't want to thought I was buying a Yixing, but right. it come up with something right. bad. As a customer, I don't think it's a good experience, but it no. doesn't mean you can only use Yixing teapot. There's other choices yeah, there's that are really good. Yeah, many other teapots, and it really yeah. comes down and to... And for... I've, I'm sorry. No, just similar like we say with a tea. Uh, ideally, you're getting... You're told what it really is, but in the end, if the price is good and it's clean and it's not going to hurt you, mm. Then enjoy it. Just yeah. you know, you can follow. And I feel with like it. when mm. we like a daily drink as a tea drinker, what I feel most is maybe the tea pot shape, the pour, the other things. Mm. Uh, material is just one little aspect of it. Yeah, you're right. Mm. And far more practical to look at the functionality. How big is the opening? Does the tea you want to put in it fit? Mm. Does it pour well? Mm. Yeah. Right on. Mm. Iron spoon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Josh was like, what the heck is an iron spoon? I tried to answer that one right away because it was a good question. Right. Um, and I see um, Time Signature says they haven't tried it yet. So good. I don't, but I've lost I the think context. it was the salad. Oh, La Pet. The La, 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 La mm. okay. I guess that's the salad though. I think oh, okay. I, I'm guessing that's the name of the salad, which oh, I yeah. hope we can get the recipe for. I really want to try it. Mm. What on earth? Wow. A new tea implement I haven't heard of. Oh, sorry, Josh. It's just those regular metal spoons in your, uh, in your silverware drawer. <laughs> <laughs> Not a new tea implement. Tea by Danny. Teas by Danny. I just made a purchase of small selection of Puar coins. I'm 
I'm scared buying a whole cake because I'm not sure how to store it. Oh, well, oh. you just learned. Super easy. <laughs> and we have a video covering how to store and how to age. Oh yeah, I'll add that into yeah. the link down below. I think that store. might help you more than this session because uh, as you mentioned, if you just enter in this kind of domain, you might want yeah, to know a little, a little bit more. Bit more. A little bit more methodical, mm -hmm. yeah. And um, yes. So teased by Danny. Thank you. I did buy a very cheap one for my starter mm -hmm. journey. Betty, give a thumb up. We too give you a thumb up. Josh says, if it is a real high fired clay, you can actually put it in the microwave. Though be super careful. It heats up ultra fast, so not too long. Mm. Wow. Mm. I don't know if I would put my uh, teapot in the microwave though. I would just be nervous. I don't know why. Because I guess because microwaves are invisible. I can't see them, so I don't know what they're doing. Does he mean the teapot or does he mean the, how to heat up the tea storage container? I don't know. Oh, oh maybe, could maybe. Be, but he's talking about the uh, clay though. Yeah. Mm, we got to come back more often. Right, yeah, you're we right, got a little you're stale. Right, you're right, I made a mistake. Bayerong Hakami, mm -hmm. do, you ha do you guys have any plans to get Chao Rem printed into magazines? Wow, that's currently, a... Currently, no. Not currently, yeah. Mm. That's a great question though. But, um, but yeah, thanks for asking. Now we're thinking about it. I feel like it's very expensive to do. <laughs> yeah, me too, me too. Re Reiner Pret says, I'm going offline now. Nice to have seen you all. Okay, bye-bye, yes. Reiner. Oh, I think we missed yeah. him, but uh, it was great to see Reiner again. And uh, yeah, it's so cool to have people from like so many South America, Europe, North America, obviously. Mm -hmm. Anyway, if you're from somewhere exotic or not exotic, I'd love to know what state you guys are in too, if you're in the US, because it's really cool to see people mm -hmm. from all over the states yes. getting into tea. It's been, uh, it's so exciting. It's not like, what, I don't know about you guys, but do you have a feeling like that it's really like New York and California and those big places, but it's really awesome to see folks from, you know, all over Wisconsin, Alabama, Tennessee, Kentucky, like all those states that I do, I always think it's fancy. I'm sorry. I don't know if it's just me, but I feel like it's those fancier places, but it's actually everywhere. I love and it's those so weird. Fun. We yes. sorry to me, uh, the Danish spelling on the screen. I feel that's really fancy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the O <laughs> with the dash and everything. Yeah. Any language that I don't speak, I feel like, ooh, that's very fancy. <laughs> Betty liked the cute artwork on the tin with the yeah. little BBs and wave bye bye yeah. to Reiner. And Lolo says, you should be able to get a good standard, partly handmade yeasting teapot mm -hmm. with about that volume for 50 to 80 bucks. Yeah, echoing kind of what you said. So. I think the great advice was don't, if they're emphasizing, oh, that's so expensive because that's the real yeasting, it's a little bit like, hmm. Hand, uh, partially handmade or purely machine made, there's no huge difference in mm. quality. Just want to, uh, right. it's Good not folk. saying di disagree what you said. Sorry, Lola. I just want to add it. Uh, many people would emphasize on handmade or not handmade, those were not primarily the price difference for teapot, right. unlike a lot of common knowledge. Right. Not, not handmade doesn't mean it's bad. Right. Mm. That's a great, that's a great point. Cindy says, gives, she gives us her personal experience with how she stores her tea and I love mm. that. So let us know too what you're doing. Cindy, thanks for jumping out and just doing that. But everybody, if you have a, let us know like kind of what's going on with your tea storage situation. Where do you keep it? What do you keep it? And we'd love to hear about that. So Cindy says, uh, most of my loose tea is stored in the original bags, organized into baskets by type in a dark cupboard. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, my tea cakes are also in the cupboard inside old cookie tins. Works for me. Mm. And that's what's important, right? It yeah, works for you. I, yes. Perfect. And Josh says, that makes more sense. Yeah, I have a few bamboo tea scoops. But, oh, the iron spoon comment. So it made sense that it's just a metal spoon <laughs> from the cupboard. I was thinking it was some iron special spoon. iron spoon. <laughs> yeah, it does sound super fancy, right? Because I call out the, the material. And Josh says, I've re-roasted a ton of my oolongs to really fantastic effect. Not any of my top shelf ones, but other ones that felt a little toned down after a couple of years. Nice. Great stuff. Just in the toaster oven on flat on a flat metal sheet. Yo, I lost it. Whoa, do we have so many comments? Yeah, I was like, uh -huh. Oh gosh, we got a lot of comments. I gotta yeah, pick yeah, up yeah, the yeah. pace here. Yeah, yeah. 
here we go, flat metal sheet spread out and I wash them extremely carefully and judge mostly by smell to see when they're done. Only a couple of minutes each. Mm. Very cool. Interesting. Cindy says, I was recently at a blacksmith demonstration and the smith gave me a little iron spoon. Not really useful, but really cute. Ooh. Oh, I'm oh, super cute. jealous. That would be so cool. The real iron spoon. A real, like literally handmade, right in front of her iron spoon. Maybe, I don't know. I wasn't there, but sounds like he, I just a picture him ding, 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 hammer that out. Whoa, shook the screen and <laughs> hand that to her. Here's a spoon. Josh says, and don't worry, the toaster oven is very clean with no smells in it, only ever used for toast. <laughs> Josh says, I really brought them all back to life and intensified their native flavors. And for some ones where the original roast I don't think was done properly, turned them from only okay to really delicious, especially oh, cool. a medium quality Mi Lan Xiang Dan Song. I have like 0.75 kilos went from okay to one of my absolute faves. Nice. nice. Jinx. <laughs> Cindy says, I love drinking tea outdoors. I recently brought my travel set to an old gold mine and made tea for a friend. Ooh. That's so cool. <laughs> gold mine. That's a really kind of funny. <laughs> right. That's a, yeah. Like, is that like gold an old mine. gold rush mine with the old mine carts and stuff? I've been seeing photos of folks brewing tea in the snow. It's on my bucket list. Mm. Ooh. Do you get snow, Cindy? I think they I, have ski hills. Mm, she's, I don't think she's super far south. Oh. So let us know if you have snow or if it's maybe it's more polite where you're from and you have to go up a mountain to see it. It doesn't fall right on your head like ours does. <laughs> right on your head. Right, right on, on your head. head. So Time Signature says, holy heart foundation, Hitman trumps Hogan anytime. Oh boy, that's some wrestling talk right there. That's some wrestling talk. I can't believe he knows the Hitman. Cindy says, I'll try to post the recipe on Discord later. Thank you. <laughs> Josh says, hey, Jen, just by the way, I think sometimes you're using vis-a-vis -vis sometimes when you mean versus. Super sorry if this is, oh, oh no, it's totally appropriate. We're not sensitive about that. What's um, the difference? Uh, like one's contrast to the other versus and vis-a-vis -vis mm. is like the um, away. Anyway, oh. I'm not sure. Maybe Josh can clear that up. Just from the best I place. I thought they all means the A compared with B kind of thing. No. No way. No. Sorry, I used I don't that think. Wrong. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I didn't even notice or I would have said it too. You're used to it. That's why. Like, it's really helpful when you guys point that mm. out because he has been contaminated by me. So I have. I have. <laughs> and by my own bad habits too. So, yeah, we don't mind. Yeah, yeah, I don't mind at all. And about the microwave thing, it was to be high fire clay. It was, it has to be high fire clay. It was definitely talking about the tea storage canister. Ah, right. Oh, he's talking I about to get so. that aroma out. Oh, right. Yeah. Specific type of clay and like kiln temperature range. Yeah, mm -hmm. right, right. Cindy says, I'm in the foothills of the Sierra Nevada mountains in Northern California. Ah, there we go. So... I still what don't know. I don't know if they get <laughs> I don't know what's the climate there. I just thought it was a bit more northern California. I think northern. Can northern California get snow? I don't know. Uh, I, I don't thought know. of California stands I guess it's for... on her bucket list, so not often. Or she would just rush out and have tea and it would be done. Right? right? <laughs> <laughs> Need some analyze. Right? So, um, so if it is below that range, not at all sure about the fire. Oh, right. Definitely dangerous. And teased by Danny says, thank you so much for answering my questions. Had lots of fun. Hugs, tea friends. From New England. Yay, New England. Oh, that's not too far. That's like uh, New Hampshire, Vermont, uh, Maine, Massachusetts. Is Massachusetts New England? Maybe not. Connecticut. I think I covered them. I think that's considered New England. I don't know. I'm not a, I'm not a geography super guy. might get in guy. trouble. I might. I might, right? <laughs> and I probably missed one too, so I'm probably in big trouble. Josh says, but things like typical porcelain... Uh, ceramics, high temperature. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Right. Um, Beirong says, I just posted an interesting picture gone from anywhere from Denmark. Ooh, oh, yay. Let nice. us know where that is. Is that... Uh, I think it's in uh, Discord. In Discord? Okay, cool. I don't know. I I'm just looking assume. forward to checking that. <laughs> checking that. I got some recipes there. We've got some pictures there. I don't know why I assume that. It could be anywhere. Instagram oh, he says anything. right there, Discord. Yeah, oh, he, okay, he comes okay. back and says that. Tea in a gold mine, yeah. Beirong also thinks that's super cool. Right. We're totally like. Totally if there are any gold left, 
That would be pretty. I just feel like bling, bling, bling while you have. I don't. I don't know if gold is that pretty when oh. it's just in the rock. I don't know, but it would be really nice to grab. What is it in the water? Though? The water, rock. It depends. Okay. I don't know. Obviously, I don't know what I'm talking. Me about. neither. I don't know. <laughs> Cindy says we rarely get snow at my house, but it does happen. My husband can ski about forty minutes away, higher in the Sierras. And uh, mm. Josh tells us visa means kind of like related to, whereas versus is direct contrast. There we go. Okay. Oh. Teased by Danny he says Massachusetts, and yes, Massachusetts is part of New England. Nice. Uh, Josh Wait. says versus means more drawing contrast. Right on, guys. We are all caught okay, up. Okay, that's good to know. Thank you, Josh. That's really helpful. Yes, very helpful. So a few more video links going up in the links down below. Um, comment about, uh, leave us comments about what to do next. We've only got two episodes left. We're jumping into part three next week. Mm -hmm. We're Little having a live on Thursday and I'll uh, post some of uh, uh, my thoughts in terms of uh, the direction kind of we want to go with the Sunday tea book mm. on Discord. And if you guys have any suggestions, don't don't ha yeah, don't oh. hesitate. <laughs> and I was yeah, just thinking, hesitate. Discord is a great spot mm. too if you're new to the if you're new to this uh, to this phenomena of Sunday Tea Book. Jump on the Discord. It's a great spot to do some back and forth and chat with us directly about mm. ideas. Mm. I might even start a little channel there just for oh we have a Sunday Tea Book channel. That's mm -hmm. the perfect spot to put your thoughts about what's coming up mm -hmm. uh, in the Discord. But of course, you can reach us however you want to reach us. I want to give you a little look at what's coming up next week too. I, Always love to do that. Mm -hmm. So I'll just quickly scroll down after tea in the outdoors. So guys, part three. Woo! Okay, this is huge. Talk about tea, tea in the life. That's what's coming up. Look at that gorgeous lomjin. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> All right, and we're going to be getting into stuff like this. Ling Lom teacups. So pretty. Little preview. Tea telling. Tea is the national drink. Okay, that's enough. I'm just teasing you so that you come back next week. <laughs> All right, so great stuff. We're going to be um, a couple episodes away from finishing up, thinking about what to do next for Sunday Tea Book. Uh, we didn't say it earlier, but we're going to say it now. If you got some value out of, this, uh, out of this show, just please give us a thumbs up. It really helps the channel out. Check out the tea we were drinking in the link down below. If you want to try some, that really helps the channel out too. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click the notify bell so you'll know whenever we go live or post new videos. We do all kinds of crazy stuff. We do travel logs. We do how to brew. We do stuff on tea storage, which I'm going to put up. How to choose a yeasting teapot, for example. How to choose a gaiwan. How to brew an unknown oolong. We have all <laughs> kinds of cool stuff on this channel, all related to tea and how amazing it is. Thank you all for joining, joining us. us. Such a fun experience this has been and is ongoing. People from all over the world. Guys, have a great rest of your weekend. Yes. And until next time. Keep steeping. Keep steeping. Bye-bye.